This video will teach you how you can make almost any design you can think of without having to be a graphic designer. When I first started Print On Demand, I was super intimidated by actually making designs, and it took me a total of about four years to learn all of these skills that I'm gonna share with you in this video. These nine skills that I'm gonna share with you in this video should allow you to make almost any design you can think of and take your current designs to the next level. This is everything you need to become basically as close to a professional graphic designer as you can without any professional courses or in-depth training. If you've seen my t-shirt design tutorial, that should at least get you off the ground and teach you the philosophy behind making design templates. The idea that for every one good template you make, you're basically creating hundreds of future designs. But we only really covered text designs in that video. So in this one, we're looking at some more advanced text designing, as well as including some other things such as masking, graphics, and other elements as well. While you can make great designs in Canva or other similar platforms, you'll never get to the same level of speed or quality that you can in my favorite free program called Figma. Each one of these skills builds on top of the other, so if you don't fully understand skill number three, moving on to four and five might be a little harder. But with that out of the way, let's get into skill number one, which is understanding basic terminology. Before we go on making anything, if you don't understand these terms, it's gonna be difficult to know what I'm talking about. The first term is vector versus raster image. Simply put, a vector, sometimes called an SVG, EPS or .ai file. These can be scaled as large as you want to make them without losing any quality. With a raster image or a photo, the more you zoom in, the more it becomes pixelated and distorted. There are also a few editing differences, but those are the main ones. Second thing you need to know is layers. Now on the left side of Figma, you should see your layers panel. Each item is its own layer, whether it's a text layer, image, graphic, or a vector. It's also hierarchical, meaning that the top layers will literally appear on top of the ones below it if they're close enough together in your workspace. Third is a group, which are just several layers combined into one that move and act as one layer for the most part. But you can still edit the contents of each of those layers individually. And now that you know those basic terms, we can move on to the first most fundamental skill, which is using the text controls. Contrary to popular belief, the most basic text designs are almost always some of the best sellers regardless of what platform you sell on. Like if you don't know how to control text designs, you're setting yourself up for failure. To get the best text designs, you have to be able to use the text controls to get the most out of each font. You can start by making a new text layer by hitting T on the keyboard or by choosing the text box option in the top left corner. Once you type something out, hit enter and you'll see a text section on the right of the screen. These options allow you to change the font or pick the different weight or style. You can adjust the line height or the spacing in between each character. And you can control the alignment of the text to the text box, both horizontally and vertically by using each one of these controls. The text box constraints control how the boundaries are drawn around the text that you made. Hitting these three little dots in the bottom of the text section brings up a new menu with more options like the ability right here to force upper, lower, or title case. And other features like the ability to change things like the style sets or ligatures if that font supports it. You're also able to select individual characters and apply ligatures to them or select individual lines of text and change the fonts, weights, or spacing. Now, if you want different size text, then sometimes it's easier to just make two separate text boxes. And then if you switch to the scale tool from the drop down in the top left, or just by hitting the K key on your keyboard, you can resize the text box to whatever size you need or even change the font. Now, editing text is pretty easy, but what if we wanted to bring those designs to life a little bit more by adding some color? Just by doing some simple text edits, like centering it, changing the font and adding color, allowed this shop to sell four times the amount of the almost exact same shirt. Adding color is super easy to do. It'll allow you to create a lot more variations of your designs and it's super popular right now, so you should probably know how to do it. When you select the layer, you'll see a color selector appear on the right side of the screen. When you click on it, you're able to scrub through and pick almost any color that you could possibly want. Now you can get great color palettes super easy. I just go to freepick.com and since I pay for the subscription, I can just search for a retro design. I can screenshot it and drag it right into Figma. Now Freepik isn't a sponsor of the channel, I just like their website. Now with our layer selected, if I just hit the I key on my keyboard using this eyedropper tool, I can just click and select any color that I want to change the text to. You can also select individual characters and then choose the color fill from the right hand side and change the color of each character separately if you wanted to. 
Then when you select a layer that has multiple colors in it, you can easily select all of the elements that are one color and change them to something else, or you can replace all of the colors just by adding a new fill. And maybe we want this one to look a little bit different. So in the fill options, I'm going to switch the solid to linear, and then I'm going to create a super easy gradient just by using these sliders. Since we can now add some color to our designs, let's step it up a notch and try adding some shapes. Now shapes are everywhere in all kinds of designs, from little details like lines around text, big blocks, squares, or really anything you can imagine, and they're all super easy to make. So there's five base shapes that we can make. The first is a rectangle, so just hit R on the keyboard and click and drag one out. Now, if you hold shift while you click and drag, it'll constrain the proportions and make it a square. And we can do the same for each of these shapes. There's an ellipse or a circle tool. You can access it by hitting O. In the top left, you can access the polygon tool, drag one of those out. And there's also a tool for making stars. So we can make one of these as well. Now with each of these drawn out, you can click and select them and you'll see these white little handles appear. Depending on which shape it is, you these controls will allow you to edit the shape, like adding a radius or a rounded corner. You could do things like add more sides to a polygon or change the amount of spikes on this star. Always remember that you can just adjust one of the shapes by clicking and dragging on the handles and holding shift will constrain the proportions. Just basically maintain the ratio between the width and the height. Anytime you make a shape, once again, you can use the color picker tool to change its color. And if you select it, you can make a copy of it just by holding the option key on your keyboard and dragging it to the side. Again, holding shift will copy it in a straight line. We'll apply these shapes more later on, but without this next skill, it's going to be really hard to make great designs. And that skill is the ability to use the alignment tools. Now, if you have a bunch of design layers and you want to line them up or organize them with one another, then you have to know how to use these tools. These tools make it incredibly easy to organize, make evenly spaced designs, and designs with a lot of repetition. There are a handful of really useful alignment tools in the very top right. With the layers that you want to align to one another selected, you can choose one of the options such as a vertical alignment. Now, you can use these tools to align your objects on the horizontal plane, just by selecting them and choosing the left, the right, or the center option. And then sometimes it's nice to use this dropdown and choose the distribute function to space them evenly to one another. And the same tools work if you wanna do it vertically. You can select them all and then just choose top, bottom, or center. And once again, you can use this little drop down distribution tool to space them evenly. Now, after using the distribution tool, you should see these small pink handles appear, which you can use to re-space your design. This is especially useful when making text designs where you have one line of text and it just repeats over and over. If the layers are too far apart or unevenly spaced, we can use the alignment to position them and then distribute them evenly to one another by using those pink handles, bringing all of the layers back in close to one another. And this tool can help you get some pretty cool effects. For example, if I bring the bottom layer to the right hand side and then select them and select the horal distribution button, you can see we get this pretty cool slanted effect. But if we don't like that, I could just select them, center align them, and we're back to normal. These little pink circles also let you reorder the items selected as long as they're aligned and distributed. Each one of these alignment controls also has an associated hotkey and learning those will save you a ton of time. But now usually this type of repeating design has hollow text with a border. So if you want to make that style, let me show you how to do it. Now strokes are important for several different styles and functions. They can be used on text, vectors, and other effects that we'll talk about in a minute. To illustrate what this does, just click the stroke button on the right hand side of the screen with something selected. And you can change it to whatever color you want it to be. And this box right here allows you to change the thickness or the weight of the stroke. Now there's a very small border that outlines any shape or text called a path. If you look at this circle shape and I add a stroke to it, this drop down menu controls whether the stroke is printed on the inside of the path, the outside of the path, or centered along that path, as you can hopefully see from this super thin blue line running through it. Now the same applies for the text. You can print the stroke on the inside, outside, or center of each character. Now clicking these three little dots will allow you to change if the corners of the stroke are printed as squared off, the default, beveled, or you could even do round corners. Now you can do more crazy stuff like turning the stroke into a dotted line and all kinds of other weird stuff, but you can play around with this on your own. When I apply the stroke to all of these layers and just turn off the regular color fill, 
Then you can see adding in the black fill to the bottom one or something. You can see that we get this classic look that Under Armour and all kinds of other companies use. Designs like this are also really common and we can make them super easily. So we'll just want to build a rectangle shape around our text. Then I'm going to hide the fill from it, I'm going to add in a stroke. Then I'll just adjust the thickness of the stroke until it looks good. And then I can rotate it make a copy and rotate that one the other way to get this kind of messy box look. I can also do this with a box with a little portion of it cut out. Once I have a box with a stroke made, I just have to double click it, press P on my keyboard to select the pen tool, and then I simply click to add a point on either side of the text where we want it to break. And then I'll just select that middle point and hit delete center point, just delete on my keyboard. We got the same effect. Now, a quick pause here to remind you that if you're doing this in Figma and it feels overwhelming and intimidating, it's worth learning because in the long term, it's so much faster and robust and you can do so much more with it. Now we can get into some of the more fun stuff that can really boost your sales if you use it properly. All of the distressed designs and the designs that are using negative space are using something called masks. And they're actually a lot easier to use than you might think. Now we can make distressed designs super easily. I downloaded this overlay design from a website called Freepik, but you can find them a bunch of places online. To use it, just align the layer that you want to appear distressed on top of the overlay layer. Then we'll click and drag to select them both and hit this little use as mask button on the top of the screen. Now you can see that the layer is distressed and if we wanted, we could still change the color of it. To do this effect with a regular image, instead you'll want to place the text or shape layer below the image and make sure that they're aligned. And then this time when you select the layers and mask them, the shape will mask out the image. This works for any design, but if there are multiple layers in your design, you'll want to make sure to select those layers and hit command G to group it before you use it as a mask. You can even stack these effects as well. So once our image mask is made, then we can place that mask group on top of our distress layer overlay. And if we select them and make a mask, you can see it's now distressed as well. Now we can do some negative space. This kind of negative space design is super easy to do. So if you have a text layer that you want to punch out from a shape, you can put the text layer on top of the shape and then select both of those layers by clicking and dragging. And from this top drop down, just click the subtract selection. From here, you could still edit the text or the shape below it. Now I downloaded the Sasquatch vector from FreePix so that you can see we can do the exact same thing with graphics. So I could place this vector on top of a shape like this triangle. And again, if I select both layers and hit the subtract selection, it will punch out the top layer, the Sasquatch from the bottom one. Again, I'm showing you this in order so that you can stack these effects. You could add back in that distress overlay below our punched in design and make it look even cooler. Now to get this kind of text outline with negative space, we can combine a stroke and a mask. Let's say you want to punch out this bottom text from the top layer. What we want to do is duplicate the bottom text layer and select the top one. Then we need to add a stroke to it. And I like changing it to red so that I can see what I'm doing. And as I add thickness to the stroke, this is going to be the negative space that we're removing. Once it looks good, I'm going to right click on it and hit this outline stroke button. Then while the two layers are still selected, I'm going to hit command E on my keyboard to flatten it. Now I'm gonna double click on this new layer that we just made and we need to delete as much of these extra points as possible. So I'm just going to click and drag over them and delete these little dots on the side to make this layer easier for Figma to process. I'll talk about this more in a second, but the more points that a layer has, the higher probability that the mask won't work. Then I'll select that letter that we just used the outline stroke on. I'll select the text layer behind it that I want to mask it away from. And then in this dropdown from the top, I'll just choose subtract selection. And now we have this negative space outline in the bottom text layer. Then I'm just going to select everything, hit command G to group it, and we have a finished design. Now, just as a final example of the masks, if you wanted to do something like one of these sunsets from scratch, it's pretty easy to do. We just have to make a circle and then click and drag out a rectangle to whatever size you want it to be. And then it will just hold the option key and duplicate it a couple of times so we get multiple colors. Then I can hit the I key and use the color picker to change the colors. Then I can select all of the rectangles and resize them just by clicking and dragging to the proper size. Then I'm gonna select all the layers and hit mask. It's super easy. Now, if I needed negative space, 
I could just select those rectangles. I'd have to make them a little bit smaller and then I'd use those pink handles that we learned about to space them out a little bit. Now, if you're still watching, you probably have mental overload, but good job. This next style is super popular and trendy right now. And it uses this kind of warped text effect. This retro warped text effect is pretty easy to do, but sadly, the biggest disadvantage is that it's not free. So to get this style, we'll need a text layer. Then we have two options to achieve it. In Figma, you can come up to this plugin section and search for the warp tools. Now this plugin will allow you to achieve the same result. You get about three free uses, and then I think it's $20 for a lifetime license, but it's very slow to use. So I'm just going to be using Adobe Illustrator. To do that, I'm just going to right click on my design, go to copy and paste and select copy as SVG. Then I can switch over to Adobe Illustrator and literally just command V to paste it in. Now in Illustrator with the design selected, I can go up to the very top of my screen and choose object, then choose envelope distort and click make with warp. This will bring up a menu. And from here, you can select all different kinds of effects like this arch effect, which is literally just arched text. You could do a flag, which is a really popular one, or probably the most popular is this wave design. And once you get it somewhere where you like, you can just hit okay. And then you can literally hit command C to copy it. And we can come back to Figma and command V to paste it in. Now, I know we covered a lot, so great job if you made it this far. I hope everything made sense. But before you go, here's a few bonus tips that I think will really help you out. First is to learn the hotkeys. Now, I can't even begin to explain how much time you'll save if you learn the hotkeys. You can do things like aligning items, making copies, searching for different layers, running plugins and all different kinds of things 10 times faster if you learn the hotkeys. You can view all of the hotkeys by clicking on this question mark in the bottom right of the screen and hitting the keyboard shortcuts. From here, just go through and read all of the keyboard shortcuts and what they do. Tip number two is to make use of plugins. This tab that we looked at before, if you click on it, it allows you to search through all different kinds of plugins. These plugins have been a game changer for me. There's plugins to arch the text without having to use Illustrator, skew the text from left to right and up and down, a better font picture, which will literally show you the fonts that you have and what they look like, an icon plugin, which has thousands of icons and graphics that you can use, and just a ton of other useful stuff. So go search through what the community and people are making and see if there's anything useful for you. And third is to join the Discord community where you can come and ask your questions, talk about drop shipping and print on demand and just business ideas in general. It's free and we've got an awesome community of people. So be sure to come check it out. Now I know this video was a little longer than normal, but I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you soon.